Hello, my beautiful people. It is I, it is her, it is she, it is Coach. Thank you again for tuning in to Coach TV, where here I talk about everything health, mindset, lifestyle, and business. I give you a peek into my world, and I try to provide you with some guidelines and some gems that you can utilize in your everyday life to grab a hold of that thing and start living in your purpose, right? And so today I want to talk to you about um, why my first business failed. And yeah, it did. Um... And so, um, I want to give you a little backstory in reference to it, how I got there, where, how it started, and then where I'm at today and what it is that I can um, assist you with to give you just a couple of gems on how you can successfully build your business, right? And this is just my point of view from where I'm where I was positioned and how it happened to me, right? So long story short, um, I, I never knew about entrepreneurship. I never knew that that thing existed because that wasn't something that we talked about, right? It wasn't something that was discussed a lot, um, back in the seventies and eighties and the nineties. Like you didn't hear a lot about that. You heard more like about other things that was going on with people, you know, just in general, because we didn't have internet. It wasn't like we had internet, but we wasn't on the internet. We were outside with our friends, we were playing, you know, and as you grew up, you had children and it just was a cycle of you just work, you go to work, you get, get a good job, you get, you get, you graduate high school, go to work, get a good job and you pay your bills, take care of your kids. That was the, the norm. Like that was the norm and reference to how I was raised, right? We didn't talk about college. We didn't talk about other avenues. We didn't talk about you could build a business. We didn't talk about those things. And that's because my parents, they didn't know about those things. They were just basically winging it. Like most parents do, they winging it and they just trying to figure it out to make sure that their kid be able to grow up in life. Don't get yourself hurt. Don't get yourself locked up. Don't get yourself in trouble because this world is not nice. And that's how my parents basically, you know, raised me. Like be cautious of people, mind your business, don't be in nobody else's business, have your little fun, but you're going to need to go to work. You got to get a good job and you got to be able to pay your bills because you can't live with me forever, Right. And I didn't want to live my parents forever because I needed my own space. <laughs> but that's a whole nother story. Um, so I never knew about entrepreneurship. And I did not find out about entrepreneurship until I actually had burnout, right? I got burnout. Um, basically, it was taking a mental toll on me when I used to work at this prestigious hospital. And I worked at that prestigious hospital for over 15 years. I worked the oncology unit. And I just helped patients um, who were sick, you know, with cancer and I would build rapport with them, you know, I would get to know them. And it was to the point where so every other day or like every three days or every week, someone was literally passing away. I would go on vacation. I would come back. This person has passed away. I would go uh, over a weekend. Sometimes I worked every other weekend. And on the weekends that I didn't work, I would go to work and this person would pass away. I come back on Monday. And it was like, it was like an, it was all the time. It was all the time and I felt like this can't be it. This this can't be this can't be real life. Like this is it. You just just die. That's it. You don't, what else is could could it be? And so I had this conversation with my brother who bless his little heart. He um he had ventured into entrepreneurship, right? But it wasn't like he 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 went into it. He stumbled into that thing. It was like, "Oh, wow." That's what that is, right? It was like a stumbling situation. And so it was to the point one day, my brother came to me and he was like, well, hey, this other prestigious hospital, not hospital, this other prestigious employment is hiring. Um, do you want to um, maybe apply? Because I can get you in. You can come over there. And I'm just like, okay, I've never worked in that type of industry before, which was the banking industry. I've never done that before. But the thing about it was the banking industry taught you sales, right? Because you had to sell credit card. You had to upsell those who already had a credit card. You had your balance transfers to get them over here to this side to leave their company that they were currently with. So it was like I was going into a whole nother realm. I was going into a whole nother world and I didn't even know that that world existed, right? That's how green I was to reality of life, right? And so I knew that people had credit cards and I knew that um, 
only the rich people in my mind. Only people who got money got they they're the only ones people living in big houses. They're the only ones that can afford to have credit cards, right? Because my parents they didn't talk about money. We didn't talk about finances. All I knew was money don't grow on trees. Don't ask for no McDonald's. And I'm gonna get it for you when I got it. <laughs> That was it. But it wasn't like in a negative sense. It was just like, that's how we grew up, right? And so my brother had told me about this prestigious place and I was going to do some banking, but it wasn't in a banking like center. It wasn't like at the bank. It was in a facility. It was like in a, um, a big building and it had nice windows and it was all nice and pretty and shiny inside. And, and when I went in, right, I had a cubicle and never had a cubicle before. I was like, okay, but I got the job. They hired me, they trained me and me and my brother actually worked there together. He was on one team and I was on the other team. And it was like more of a competition because people knew that we were brother and sister. So they were like competition, like, oh, Yolanda got X, Y, and Z sales. Oh, oh my goodness. Her brother got X, Y, and Z sales oh my goodness who gonna end the day who gonna end it like it was like a competition but it was something that was new to me but what I really enjoyed was at the end of the month they provided a commission so whatever you sold at the at at the end the month right at the end of the month, it was like probably the every other month or something like that it was to the point where so I was getting commission every month I was getting commission at the end of the month um, and we got paid semi-monthly. I got paid on the 15th and the 30th of the month. The 15th was a regular check and the 30th of the month or the 31st of the month, that was my um, commission check, right? Now, I wasn't high and mighty in the sales, but I made some good money, right? I have to say I made some good money because I had to learn scripting and they provided me a script and I would talk to my brother and I'm just like, I don't know um, how to do this. Like, what am I supposed to do? He was like, you take the script. He was like, you're going to read the script. You're going to memorize the script. He was like, you say the script in the shower. Say the script when you're eating your breakfast. Say the script when, you, when you're driving to the job. He was like, just say the script all the time and it'll get, it'll be like second nature. You'll just get used to saying the script. Which was true. He was absolutely correct. I got used to saying the script. It was like second nature. I didn't need the paper anymore. I just would say the script, right? And so because of that learning um, that situation, when the bank actually, um, I guess something was going on in reference to um, how things were, the bank had took and did a collection. So they did... They went from sales department to now we got me to collect, right? And I was like, okay, so let me get this straight. And this is my mind, this is what I'm thinking. You want me to um, go from selling credit cards to now calling people and asking them for money to pay off the credit card? Uh-uh, no, I ain't gonna do that. Because in my mind, I went back to like my childhood. People are going to just go ahead and ignore that phone call. They're going to see you calling. They're not going to pick up that phone. And if somebody come on that line and tell me, do you think I'm going to pay you or, pay, or put food on the table for my kid? Or you think I'm going to pay you or I'm going to pay my mortgage? I'm going to tell you real fast. You better pay your mortgage. You better put that food on the table. You can pay this later. In my mind, because I'm like, I'm not going to collect on something that you gave them. That's your fault. You gave it to him. In my mind, that's what I was thinking because at the time I was only in my 20s. So this is how I thought. And I thought this is how it was. Right? Um, and so again, I said I wasn't going to do collections. I need to find something else. But as I journeyed off and went into a different field, which was more like... Um, Corporate America, I stayed in corporate America. I just did corporate corporate America and I stayed working in prestigious companies and I stayed going to like the top of the companies and just working there and doing everything until I finally landed the last job and I was like, okay, I'm gonna stay here for some time. And I was with that job for some years, like over maybe seven years I was with them. And um, but that was draining too, right? Because in my mind, I'm thinking like I'm helping someone, but in reality, I really wasn't helping nobody. I just felt like it's all a setup and it's just not right. And how they got this thing set up, this person, whoever's on the opposite end of this, they're not going to get through. They are not by any means necessary going to win this battle because it is not a battle that they're going to win, right? Especially when you're working on the inside and then you look 
on the outside and you're looking at the person across from you given and they're giving you their life story and for me i'm always compassionate about someone in their life story because i don't want anyone to suffer but i know it's not my job to make sure that they don't suffer i just like to sometimes be a listening ear and try to give the best advice that i possibly can to get a person out of a situation whether they follow it or not that's on them but i just know that i went through a lot of things in life and i needed some guidance and when i finally got that guidance my mom did a phenomenal job of providing me information on how to guide certain situations as i got older right and i'm so thankful for her to that for that because that was great for her to actually show up and teach me certain things that I did not know, um, especially when it came to bills and making sure that you take care of your kids and you know you don't need government assistance. You work, you get your job, you keep your job, your job pays your bills, your job takes you out, your job do that. That's, that's what you use your job's money to do all the things that you like to do in life, right? And that's how I was taught and that's how I was raised. And my mom, she worked a multitude of jobs. Not to even mention, just to jump back over here a second for on my mom is that my mom actually showed us entrepreneurship at a young age and we didn't even know what that was my mom was doing hair out of her home my mom would um like even to this day she makes masks for a prestigious hospital like she has been in that entrepreneurship field for decades and we never even knew what that was because nobody talked about it. It wasn't something that was talked about. So we did not know that that's what it was. And my mom, my mom was on her hustle and she was getting some extra money. She had three kids and she had to do what she had to do. And my mom, right, that's what she did. And to this day, my mom is still on her grind as an entrepreneur. So as time went on, of course, you understand the process. You looking at it and you understand how the flow went. But when you're growing up and you're in it, you have no idea what that is, right? So let's go back to the story. So met this other job and I've stayed there for about seven to eight years. Um, but each time I would leave the job, I would want to do, um, I want to work for myself. And I would tell my husband, like, I just want to work for myself. I just want to do that, right? Because this video is about how my first business failed. But I had to give you a backstory on how I'm getting to this first business, right? And so I would tell my husband that I wanted to work for myself. And my husband is the type of guy that if I want to go to the moon, he going to make it happen. If I want to go see the sun setting by root, Kapu or whatever. If it's a whole new nation being created, he gonna take me over there because I just want to go and see what it look like, right? That's the type of husband I have. He don't matter. He gonna work it out. He gonna make it happen because that's what you want. That's what I'm gonna do. You remember that T.I. song? You can have whatever you like. That's that's my husband, right? <laughs> Sorry, that's him, right? But that's him. Um, And so I said to him, I said, babe, I want to try to work. I want to work for myself. I don't want to do this. I want to work for myself. And so we couldn't figure out how I was going to work for myself because I didn't know what I was going to do. So I started um, thinking about maybe I could sell jewelry, right? I was like, oh, I like, I like the shop. I like jewelry. But here's the thing. I did not have a blueprint to this thing. I did not even know how to do this. I didn't even know how to maneuver the process. I didn't even know where to start, right? But I was like, okay, I'm just going to try to sell some jewelry, right? And so my first initial business, was sophisticated she right and that was the name of it and it was it was it was good i made some good little money right selling little nickets and nookets of jewelry pieces um but i still didn't have a process i didn't have how i was gonna do it how i was gonna make this thing happen how i was gonna stay in tune with it right and so that wasn't like the first initial real business for me. That was just something that I was playing with because remember, I never actually knew how to run a business, right? I was never taught. I never had the blueprint. I did not understand it. But as a kid, I was growing up, I saw it with my eyes from my mom because she ran a full-fledged business out of her dining room where she was doing hair. She was literally doing everybody's hair from across places. People was driving to my mom to get their hair done because she was the only person at the time that was doing interlocks, right? And if you remember what that is, I'm telling my age here, but interlocks 
Now it's crocheting. You got to crochet the hair and all that stuff, right? But interlocks was the thing. And my mom was a beast at interlocking, okay? She could put that thing in and you, what? what? It will not come what way off? No, it ain't going to do that, right? And so that's how I learned that this was the entrepreneurship world that I was originally, that I seen growing up. And so, long story short, here is the nuggets of this video. And I want you to understand where I provide you um, the information, okay? So, this is where I'm going to get very detailed and where I will provide you more information than the backstory, okay? That's, that's the backstory. Backstory is learned entrepreneurship, saw it every single day from my mom, did not know that that's exactly what it was called. My mom was a hustler. She was doing entrepreneurship in her kitchen. She was doing hair and she's now today doing hospital bonus and mask, right? For prestigious hospitals, right? Second thing is I never knew about sales until my brother brought me into the sales community when I started working for the prestigious bank who learned and taught me, who taught me how to do credit card sales, balance transfers, and how to communicate a message across with a script, okay? And then that's the backstory. That's the backstory of entrepreneurship and sales. That's how I got into those two pieces, but not really understanding. And so I wanted to start a business, right? Did not know what I wanted to do, but I knew I was getting drained at this other new, at this other job that I was at for over seven and a half years, and I wanted to start a business. So I kept telling my husband, I want to start a business. I want to do something. I don't know what I want to do, and I want to try something. I tried to sell... Um, jewelry pieces which was a hit i made a couple of sales with jewelry but it wasn't anything that i was really like over the top with right it didn't it didn't simple my fanny then i did another business which i did a daycare i came home again and i said okay well i'll just watch kids in the neighborhood or i'll watch family kids and i'll charge them a price and i'll do daycare which was called tiny buttons daycare right i did daycare and I did that for like a whole year and I made some good money off of that. I actually made a good a good profit from daycare because I only had a couple of family members' children, but I also had a couple of people that um, knew me that they wanted me to watch their kids. So I did that for a while too, right? But here's the thing. I didn't want to watch kids for the rest of my life. I did not want to be that person because in my mind, I always wanted to be a prestigious person who delivered world-class quality of something, right? But I knew that it wasn't the space for me to try to grow with being a daycare provider because that wasn't something that my heart was truly in. Even though I had a child and I had kids, I could watch my own kids. We didn't have to pay for daycare. I could be home and I could watch other people's kids and still get paid for it. But that was not the space that I wanted to really grow in, right? So then the next business I tried was um, I did a cupcake business. I did cupcakes and cakes and it was called Puddin's Treats, right? And so Puddin's Treats was the crumb of the crumb. Puddin's Treats made good money. I want to say in a one month, Putting Streets could bank at least about $3,000 or $4,000 in a month, right? Because I'm baking homemade goods out of my kitchen and I'm actually selling it to the neighborhood kids. And I was actually um, selling my cakes to people who would drive from different places to come and pick up the cakes. And then I was like, well, this is, seem, this, this is good because we're making some good money. But again, my heart wasn't in it because if anybody knows about baking, and if you don't have the right setup, you will burn out quickly because your whole entire day is baking. Your whole entire weekend is baking. You're going out to buy more stuff because you got to bake some more. You really don't have any downtime because you're baking all the time. And I, I mean, my stuff was on demand. It was like if someone, I couldn't even pull the, the cupcakes out the oven fast enough. That's how bad people wanted them. It was like an addiction, right? <laughs> And that's because I had boys and they were like my little salespeople. They would go out, my mom sell cupcakes, my mom sell cupcakes, my mom sell cupcakes, my mom sell cupcakes. And they would bring more people that wanted to try putting streets. Oh my gosh, I, I'm just getting overwhelmed. I'm just thinking about them putting the streets. <laughs> but it was a lot. And so I had woke up one morning and I told my husband, I'm shutting putting the streets down. We're not doing this no more. And he was like, what? You want to shut that down? 
you do so good. Yes, because I'm the only one in the kitchen cooking. <laughs> That's why I do so good. But he understood and we shut it down, right? The boys was disappointed, but I could still make treats for them because they live with their mom. They're in a home with their mom. So I could still make treats for them. And that's what I did. I made treats, you know, with dinner and here and there. But then eventually I stopped with the treats because I realized that's not healthy. And that ain't good for your heart. And it sure ain't good for your stomach. It ain't good for your arteries. It ain't good for nothing, right? Eat that stuff sporadically. Don't eat it every single day. And I was baking it to the point where so it was like an every single day, every other day, every weekend in my home, right? And so I had to stop. I had to realize I had to stop because I was getting overwhelmed with doing those treats. And so I went back to work to the same job. I goes back to the same job and I'm still at burnout mode. I'm still like, I thought that was going to be it. I thought that was going to be the moment. I thought that was going to be um, the, the breakthrough, but nothing really was sticking that made me feel like this is what I really want to do with the rest of my life. I really want to do this. So again, second part, right? First part, entrepreneurship, mom in the kitchen. Second part, the first part, entrepreneurship, mom is in the kitchen. My mom, you know, she's doing hair. And now today my mom actually does masks and bonnets for prestigious people in hospitals, right? But she showed me entrepreneurship. My brother introduced me to sales, right? Okay. My boys was my little salesman and the biggest business that made the most money that I actually did was to put in streets, right? It's that was the great thing. And the crazy thing about it is putting streets came because my grandma used to call me putting cakes. And so I said, okay, I'll try putting streets. And that was a hit. It was a great hit. And I made like 3000 every single month with that business, $3,000 every single month. There was no month that I wasn't making more, wasn't making less than uh, to 2,500, I would say 22,000 to 3,000. I would make a month because they were coming consistently and I couldn't bake fast enough because my sons was my little salesman. They were just word of mouth, right? Word of mouth going out into the world, telling people exactly what I had, right? And they would bring people back, friends back, other friends back people will come visit family members they coming over here we need a treat we over somebody's house for the weekend we can get a treat let's go over here and get a treat from this lady she sells cupcakes she sells cakes and needs some good cupcakes needs some cakes and my main hit was the oreo cookie cupcake that was the hit of the hit everybody wanted the oreo cookie cupcake or they wanted the snickle do the cupcake because those was the hits right and i couldn't bake those fast enough right got burned out Closed down putting streets and went back to the job, right? Went back to the same job. Now, as you see in the pattern here, I'm just trying to find something that's going to hit, that's going to go with me, that's going to really settle in my soul and say, this is what I'm going to do. The reality of it is, is nothing was hitting because it wasn't something that I really wanted to do. I wanted to be on my own. I wanted to work for myself and I got tired of answering to people. I got tired of going to a job. I got tired of giving them my time. And by the time I got home, I had no time for my family. I couldn't give my husband the attention he needed. I couldn't give my boys the attention they needed. It was terrible, right? And so I had to find something. I needed to find something. And so I goes back to the job. Now, as I'm at the job and, you know, social media is really popping now. Social media is like, I'm sorry, guys. Social media is popping. Social media is really like doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And there are a lot of people on there. And so long and behold, there is Facebook, right? And so um, I'm on Facebook and I'm just scrolling and scrolling and I get this message one day from this nice young lady who talks to me about health and wellness and things like that and how I can, you know, start a health and wellness and start working out and this, this and that and I can get my health together. And it really was intriguing to me because I'm like, nobody's never talked to me about health and wellness. I'm over here eating fried chicken and ham hocks and pork chops and Nobody ain't never talked to me about that. So that sounds really interesting to me. I never knew that there was something out here called health and wellness. And in my mind, I never thought that there was anything that was that we were supposed to be doing anyway. Because the only thing I seen on TV was family sitting around and mom cutting vegetables and they eating salad. And it wasn't us. That's what I saw. It wasn't us, right? Um, And so to see another woman, same status myself and, and black woman and you know brown woman 
and she's talking to me about health and wellness that really intrigued me that really got me to thinking like what what health and it's health and fitness i'm sorry health and fitness and so i embarked on that journey and i really liked it right but here's the part that I hated. Here's the part that I could not stand. I did not, I wanted to do the business portion of it, but I felt like I was begging. I felt like I'm begging someone to take care of their health. And why should I have to do that? That doesn't sit well with me, right? And so I went on to this journey of health and fitness. And it was a great, great journey. I stayed in that business for about two to three years, on and off two or three years. And um, I made a nice little chunk of change. I made a nice little chunk of change, but it gave me more than what I had bargained for. It helped me to see that there is more to life than just your now, right? And on top of that, I didn't even understand how to process the business. I didn't understand how business worked because there was no one guiding me through the process. It was more like do as you see me do and then you'll get the same result or you'll get some of the result. But do what you see me do and you'll get the result, right? And so I wasn't a fan of that. I wasn't, I, I, I don't learn that way. I can't learn as someone saying, just do as you see me do. I'm really a hands-on type of person and I need to actually get my feet wet to do it. And so when I started the MLM company, um, because I did not have the mentality set in place, number one, the mentality set in place, right? To understand that I'm not selling health. I'm not selling fitness. I'm trying to help someone see the need to take care of themselves, right? So I couldn't understand that piece. I couldn't understand that piece. So the mindset first was number one, I did not have, right? The second thing was, is that I did not like sales. I did not want to sell like I was salesy. I didn't like to try to be convincing or manipulative to people. I didn't want to keep going behind someone to try to get them to do something that I didn't feel as though they wanted to do in the first place. Um, and this all gets, this all sets in with the mindset, right? And so I just would try to stay in this little bubble and sell to my family and tell them how they could just do these great things and how their body can do so many wonderful things. And I realized that as I dug deeper and as I went more in depth with the MLM company, I realized that that was not something that I wanted to continue with. It wasn't something that resonated with my soul or my heart or my mind. But the business structure intrigued me a lot. And I needed to know more of that piece. Because if I could get a business going, if I could do some things with this business, then I can by all means work for myself, right? But here's the thing. I already had four businesses that I tried to start. I already had four businesses that I had done. I had two businesses that I made some great money with. And the other two I just played around with to try to figure out what it was that I wanted to do. But I had two businesses that I had already made some great money with. I even filed taxes on uh, the businesses and got money back. So I was amazed that that could happen, right? And so I failed... At the businesses in a whole sense, in a general sense, is because I did not, one, have the mindset. Two, I did not have the faith that I believed in what it is that I was doing. Three, I did not have the structure to understand that it's not selling. It's really just communicating, right? And so when you don't have these three avenues in place, when you really don't know how to structure, you really don't know what to do, you come into a place of, I'm not sure how this is supposed to work. I have no idea what I'm doing, right? And so long and behold, the business structure, the business model was great because that MLM company taught me about personal development, right? Never knew about that. Never knew how to develop myself. Never knew that I needed development. I was always a positive person, but I never knew I needed 
more developing to be a leader or to master something in my life or to have structure or to have some type of uh, blueprint that I was following in my life to help my own children, to help my husband, to help my family. I never knew about the personal development because you're developing yourself, right? And so that was something that they introduced me to. The MLM also introduced me to my um, the business structure of how to actually uh, put business in place and how to actually start doing a business, right? Because remember, I had two, I was already getting money off of and I closed them down but because I, I, I was getting tired. I was got tired out. And I ain't want to do those two no more, right? But I wanted to do something and I wanted to make an impact and I wanted to do something great. So long and behold, let me wrap this thing up. Long and behold, I said to my husband, I want to be a health and fitness coach. That's what I said to him. I'm, I'm going to be a health and fitness coach. And then he said, okay, that's what you want to do. Then you can do that. And I said, I want to be a health and fitness coach. And I'm going to be a health and fitness coach. And, and I'm going to help women because if I could do it with their company, I know I could do it with my own self. I got the mind to do it, right? And so I started studying. I started looking. I started to understand. I started to uh, do seminars. I started to do... Uh, uh, courses, I started to really dive in to this thing called entrepreneurship because that's what it was really giving, giving. It was giving entrepreneurship. It was giving, that's what it was called. And it was giving, that's exactly what I needed to find out, right? How do I do that? Because apparently the businesses that I had, that's what I was doing, but we didn't call it that, right? We didn't call it that. But I knew that I needed to do something because I wanted to do a health and fitness, right? As I dived a little deeper and got a little further into it, I then understood that health is really wealth, right? I went to IIN schooling and they gave me a lot of insight on really about health, right? Not so much about fitness, but about health. And then I realized Ding, 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 ding. That's what it is. I want to be a health coach. That's what I want to be. That's my niche. That's my thing. That's what I want to do. That's what lights my fire. That's what gets me excited. I can talk about health all day long. I can talk about food all day long. I can talk about vegetables all day long. I can talk about uh, fruits and legumes and beans all day long. And I get excited about it because I want to talk about it. I want you to know about it, right? And so that was the piece that I said, okay. So even though I may have failed in the other business as far as that MLM was concerned, I didn't do great in that MLM because that did not resonate with me. And so the message today that I want to leave you with is if it does not resonate with you, if it's nothing or anything that does not give a light to your fire, if it doesn't tickle your fanny, if it doesn't get you excited, that may not be your thing. It may not be it. You may still need to look. And it's okay to look and to play and to dabble in to test things out to find out what will be your thing. For me, I had a jewelry. I, I sold jewelry. I did uh, daycare. I did cupcakes. I did MLM. Four businesses that did not tickle my fanny. It didn't tickle my fanny. It did not give me what I needed to say, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is what I want to teach for the rest of my life. This is what I want to grow. This is what I want women to understand. It did not give me that, right? That wasn't it. But when I embarked on becoming a health coach, when I embarked on becoming a person that gives value of information about how to take care of your entire life and not only your life, but your body, because your minds, your physical being, your emotions, your all that can place a part. And if your plate ain't right, your life ain't going to be great either, right? Or if you're great, if your life ain't great, your plate ain't going to be great either. It all coincides. And so when I learned that that's what I wanted to do, that was took my, that tickled my fanny. That was the thing that ignited me. That was the thing that made me say, yes, 
That's what I followed with. That's what I ran with. That's what I did, right? And so when my husband and I and my daughter, who helped me create the name Rock and Drop Fitness, I really originally wanted to be a fitness company. And this is where it's okay to change, right? I wanted to originally be a fitness company because I was with a MLM company and it was a health and fitness business that they were promoting, right? And so in my mind, I said, well, I need to stay fitness because I'm with this MLM company and I need to come up with a name. So let me try that. And so my daughter, she came up with this great name, Rock and Drop Fitness. And it incorporated my husband and I because my husband's always been my go-to person. He's always been the person I throw my ideas off of. And then we just originally said it just makes sense for us to just be business partners because he knows certain parts of the aspects as far as the financial pieces that I don't trust anyone else with my finances. And I know that's not right, but I just don't at this particular moment because so many things have happened with my finances and I'm giving, giving people access to finances that they just did not do right. And so my husband being the guy who I just knows is going to do right and, and I just feel like it's going to be okay, um, he hasn't disappointed yet, right? And so he has the financial piece of the business and he also does a lot of the um, coaching pieces in the background to help me with uh, making sure I stay on top of my courses, making sure I stay on top of my um, seminars, making sure that I'm getting everything that I need to continue to grow myself as a person. And so that's the piece that he does. Um, and so he's like the, the my business partner. He's the person that I go to and he's that guy, right? But that's how Rock and Drop Fitness came about because it was actually intended to be a fitness company but that's not what we do, right? And so we are revamping the name. It's going to be something different. We definitely have um, done an umbrella, um, which is YWE Solutions. And that YWE Solutions is the umbrella that's going to actually carry the whole entire industry of my coaching, right? Um, but as far as you trying to find your way, the best advice that I can give you today is to understand what lights your fire. Really dive deep into what makes you happy. Really look at the fact that if it does not make sense to you and if it does not make you feel good and you're doing it for a couple of days, you're doing it for a couple of months. And these are businesses I did for maybe a year. I did them for a year. Um, my MLM business, I went back and forth. I started in there in 2015. Um, I went again, I left and I came back in 2016. So I stayed in that thing for like a year just to try to give it some wiggle room to see if that may work for me. Um, my cupcake business, I did that thing for a whole entire two years and we ran for putting streets for a long time and putting streets made a lot of money, right? And I may go back to putting streets. I don't know. I may open it back up, but it may be something different incorporating with health instead of, you know, those treats like that. So it might be a little health treat. I'm not sure. Um, but I did a lot of things to try to figure out which way I was going to go and nothing stuck except for my health and wellness, because that's what really stuck. That's what really makes a difference. That's what lights my fire. That's what makes me happy. Right. Um, and I love talking about it. I love expressing it. I love igniting women and giving them the information and showing them and guiding them and mentoring them to find their space where so they can be mentally together. They can be physically physically together. They can be emotionally together and it all coincides with them making sure that their plate is together, right? So I give that information. I walk them through that, right? Because that ignites me. That makes me happy. And so sometimes as you're going through the process, you have to figure out what's going to work for you. And testing is the best way to do it. I am definitely a advocate to say test before you jump all the way in. If you're not testing it, you don't know if that's something that you want to do. You don't know if it's going to work. You don't know if that's going to be the, the best thing that's for you. But you have to understand that one, if you don't have your faith and you don't believe in it, it's not going to work. Two, if you are not mentally together, mindset wise, as far as you understanding and developing yourself and diving more into being a better person when it comes to running a business, it's not going to work. 
Three is you have to actually know how to sell. Not saying that you're going to be a pushy salesperson or you're going to be out there just like a salesperson, salesperson, but you do know how, you have to know how to talk to people. You have to be more of a people person. I feel like in sales, sometimes if you have a product, you can just sell that. You don't really have to be a person, people person. But when you have a service business, you want to be more of, mm, I like to talk to people, right? I want to try to get to know them because you just don't want someone to purchase your product. You want someone to be with you for years to come. Retention is the name of the game. Retention of your clients is the name of the game, right? Because you want to be able to help them. You want to be able to get them to the next step or the next phase in their life, whereas though they can make better decisions and, and help someone else along the way, right? And then fourth, if you truly do not have a blueprint, you will be all over the place. You will be all over the place. You will not know which way you're going and you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get burned out and you will quit. And that is what stopped my entire process of getting any of those businesses off the ground because I did not have those four elements in place and I did not believe in myself. I couldn't understand the products. I did not think that I knew one to do sales because sales was icky and I had no blueprint. And that was the mentality I was in, which again, if your mentality is not at its best, you will not by any means necessary be able to get your business off the ground and running. Your business will fail. Your business will not do what it needs to do because you will not have the, the enlightenment or the knowledge or the ability, the go-to, the willpower, the motivation to keep the business going. So those are the nuggets and the gems that I wanted to drop to you today. I want you to understand that there is always a process to every single thing that you do. There is a story that you have and people don't know it if you don't talk about it. And if you don't ask the questions, you can never get the answers, right? Excuse me. And I'm a, I'm a big believer that there is no dumb question. There is no dumb question because sometimes common sense ain't common. And people just don't know. So in order for you to understand it, you got to ask the questions. I didn't understand it. And I didn't have a lot of common sense when it came to business. I was green and I had no knowledge. I did not understand. But the breakdown again is very simple, okay? The past. My mom was an entrepreneur from the start. I saw my mom do hair out of her living room and dining room, right? She did that for years. That's how she made her money. And it was by word of mouth. There was no internet for her to go and post something and say, come to Eldora's and get your hair done. There was nothing like that, right? And my brother introduced me to sales. He introduced me to the sales piece of how a business works, right? Then I jumped into trying to run a business because I got tired of working for someone and not being truly appreciated. And I got tired of answering for someone. And then I got tired of being tired of coming home and not being able to fully and give my, my life to my family and really and be, be, be present with my children or my husband. Right. And so I started four businesses. I started a cupcake business. I started a jewelry business. I started a daycare business. And I even joined an MLM. And all four of those business did not go to accordingly to the next level that I would like to have any of them to go to. Not as far as that MLM is concerned, but I would have liked to have my cupcake business scale up, my jewelry business scale up. But because I was not mentally there, I didn't believe in my products. I got burnt out. I got tired. I di it didn't ignite my fanny. I did not want to do it any longer. I had to find out what worked. I had to find out what really makes me happy because happiness is something that you create within yourself. It's not about someone else or things creating happiness. You have to create that happiness within yourself, right? And when you do that, that is when you know that it is time to take the next level. It's time to scale up. It's time to move your business to the next step. And so the four things that you need to know as you're embarking on your entrepreneurship, and I truly stand behind it because I lived it and I went through it. And this is what 
which basically happens for me, right? Is that one, I had to have more faith and I had to believe in myself and I had to believe in what it was that I was doing. Two, I needed to really change my mentality because it was really stuck on, it was given, I don't want to do this and this ain't going to work and I don't want to do this. It was giving stuck. It was giving not a growth mindset, but a stuck mindset, a mindset of just being complacent. I was happy where I was at, but I wanted more, but I didn't know how to get there, right? Three, I needed to understand how sales work. I really needed to understand how this piece worked, how to get more people on what it is that I was trying to do. And then not only that, understand that sales wasn't an icky situation. It's not a disgusting thing. It's something that really is happening in the world every single day. You go to Walmart, they're selling you something. You go to Sears, they're selling you something. You go to Target, they're selling you something. They have items already on the shelves that you can pick up because you're purchasing. That's a sale. It's a sale, right? You buy a book, it's a sale. You go and you see something on TV and it's a commercial running and, and they talking about the new sandwich. You go because they unsold you. They gave you something to put into your mind and make you go get it. It's a sale and sales are not always icky. It depends on who's doing the selling. And so I had to understand that that wasn't a piece that I needed to not have. It was a piece I just needed to understand how it worked, right? And then fourthly, I needed a blueprint. I needed to understand a business and a business structure and what that looked like and what was it that I was trying to achieve and where was I trying to go with my business and what was I trying to do with it and really what was the, the purpose of it? What was it supposed to do to others? What was the, the need for it to help and how was it going to be a solution to someone's problem out in to the world, right? When you have those four elements in place, you can run a successful evergreen business. It's possible, but you have to be able to open up your mind to look at the bigger picture. So why did my first business fail? Why did all of my businesses fail? It's because I did not have those four things in place. I did not understand it and I didn't have it in place. And now I'm so excited because my new, my baby girl, my business, my, my business that's going to take off. And I just love this. I love this business, right? I love it, right? I understood the process and I had to go through the trenches to understand the process. I had to do a lot of testing, but I had to go through to get to this place where I'm at today, right? So Definitely look at your overall. Why is something failing? What hand do you have in it? What part do you play? And how much of an understanding do you have of the knowledge to make it grow into what it is that you want it to grow into? I would love to hear any businesses that you have started and which ones did not work and which ones are working for you now. <laughs> Because I had four and only one is working for me now, right? Um, so please do like and share this video. Comment below. Tell me what it is that you got out of this video. What the gems that you get from it? Um, what businesses did you open? Um, because I would love to hear. I would love to know. I would definitely love to know. <laughs> And what businesses failed on you? What businesses did you just say, forget that I ain't going to do that because that ain't working for me, right? And then which one of your business today is actually thriving? Which one of your business today is actually going to that next level? What piece is helping you get to that next level, right? Um, if you want to work with me, Coach Yolanda, definitely check out the link below. In the link below, it says work with Coach Yolanda, fill out the application, and myself or someone from my team will reach out to you. Also, I do help new entrepreneurs that are starting a business to learn how to have those four things in place along with other pieces and strategies and tactics that you need to be able to successfully move a business into the right direction, right? Because a business is only going to be successful as, well, as long as you put the work in. You ain't putting no work in. You ain't going to have no success. That's just, listen, that's the truth, okay? That is the crumb of the crumb, the crop of the crop, the piece of the piece. That's the truth. If you ain't working, it ain't going to work. That's just it, right? But there's other avenues that come with that. If you want to come into the YWE Solutions Academy for new entrepreneurs, that application is below as well. You can fill that out. And someone from my team or myself will reach out to you and we will let you, we will talk to you, see how that it goes. And if you're a good fit for us and if we're a good fit for you, because guess what? All money ain't good money. Always remember that. That's another piece that I always tell my, my little 
new entrepreneurs. All money ain't good money. Stop taking everybody's money because it ain't always good money, honey. Right? And you want to grow a good business. You want to grow something that is evergreen. Meaning that if you step away, if you are not here, that business will run on its own or whoever you have in place will make sure that it continues to grow and, and run and make an impact and produce something in this world to help someone. That's the key. To help someone. This is Coach. I thank you so much for tuning into this channel. I thank you so much for coming to Coach TV. If you do like and share, please share with someone that you know that needs this information because I needed this information and I did not have a blueprint. I did not have any way of doing it. I did not know, but I did have little pieces that was thrown at me that I could have looked at a little bit further, but when you don't know, you don't know, but when you do, when you do, can't nobody take it from you, baby, when they do, okay? Thank you again. I will talk to you in the next video. Have a great and phenomenal day on purpose, as you should. Peace.